Hello everyone and good morning and welcome to our live. I want to make a special welcome to all of our Sleep Well Baby community. We are so thrilled to be partnering with Sweet Sleep Well Baby to ensure that you all have the skills and the resources that if your baby or toddler does choke, you know what to do. That is my goal here today. So hello, hello. I'll give you a minute or two as you all come in for today's Birthbeat Choking Masterclass. Before I introduce myself, I want to say thank you for being a proactive parent. Thank you for taking the time. This is going to be probably about 25, 30 minutes. I will make time for you to ask questions at the end. So say hi, give us a wave, let us know where you're watching from. Maybe let me know how old your baby is and if your baby's watching on with you. And then I'll let you know how the format of this morning is going to go. Firstly, hello, my name's Edwina. I am a registered midwife and I'm an emergency clinical nurse consultant. <laughs> Somebody has just said, and I feel like I'm going to answer this straight away, in the event Bub wakes up, will this be available afterwards? Yes, absolutely, Jamie. So I will save this for you all because I understand you're all busy mums and dads. Um, I also want to make sure I save this because if you have a grandparent who's going to be watching your child or an aunt or an uncle or a nanny, um, make sure they sit down and watch this well. Basically, anyone you're leaving your child in the care of should know what to do if a baby or toddler chokes. It's not, you're not going to want to be Googling that at the time. It's absolutely time critical. Hello, hello, we've got 23 months Newcastle, four and a half months Sydney, six months Sydney. Jamie just says, thank you. Not a worry, Jamie. I think that's probably a question everybody wanted to know. Hello, oh my gosh, so many babies kind of getting that vibe that were around that four to eight month old. Here we've got a seven week old and an almost three year old. Um, someone just said fabulous because my little one just had a punami. Guys, I am a mama as well. I 100% get it. Um, so I'll quickly let you know, my name's Edwina. I'm a registered midwife and I'm an emergency clinical nurse consultant, which just means I've done a little bit more further nursing training um, in the emergency department. I'm also a mother of two, Polly and Theo, and I totally get it. And I totally get that you are busy. Why I teach online baby and child first aid classes is for exactly that reason. It's really hard once you're away, or already a parent to sit down and concentrate for a few hours. It's also a skill that you should refresh every couple of months because it's hard to remember it. So if you're introducing solids, that's why I teach the online program because then you can sit down and watch the choking module. Or if your baby's about to start swimming lessons or you're going to be going on holidays where there's water around, you can watch the drowning module. If you just wanna sit down and refresh on the CPR module, you can do that. So with our program, we have a 12 month, you have 12 months access to our online childbirth education or our online baby and child first aid course. Um, I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Very quickly, I've been a midwife for 15 years and an emergency nurse. And I think it's important that I share a little bit about my why. And the way that I teach our online course is actually around storytelling. And I don't say this to frighten you. And I am gonna acknowledge that the course and what I talk about sometimes can be pretty confronting because I talk about babies who are critically unwell or worst case scenario, have permanent disability or lose their lives. And I know that that's incredibly confronting to hear. All the stories that I teach and talk about either today or in my online course, I have the permission of the families to share those course, to share those stories with you. And that's because that's the way that I like to learn. I don't sit down and you know speak to a PowerPoint or things like that because that's not how you're going to remember. You're also today going to actually practice the skills of what you need to know. Because if you practice the skills today, you are more likely to remember how to do it. So I'm gonna be using Jimmy, my little resus dolly here, and I'll be showing you, but all you're going to need is a pillow or a toy or something, you know, grab a pillow off the couch. So grab that now because then you'll be able to work along with me when I'm showing you exactly what to do. I also wanna let you know, you do not need to take any notes or remember everything because for all of our Sleep Well Baby um, community, if you have registered for this live, this will be emailed to you. It is a downloadable and it will go on your fridge. It is a step-by-step -step guide on what to do if your baby or toddler 
chokes and it steps it out for you. The great thing about being it on the fridge, it keeps reminding you. It's got a little QR code that then bounces back to a video so you can refresh or if you have a babysitter, as I say, arriving or somebody caring, you can say, hey, can you just watch that 10 minute video if you're feeding their child? It's super important. I'm not somebody who likes to take notes, so that will be emailed to you. If you have stumbled across this live and you haven't registered, just send me a DM at birthbeat and I will email that to you. It's not a drama, okay? So don't feel like you have to take notes. Just sit and listen and enjoy and pay attention. So I guess very quickly about my why, why I do this. And I always share a story or a different story about what continues to motivate me. And I got an email just the other day and I'm gonna share it with you here. Um, Sorry, I'm multitasking. Again, I want to acknowledge that this can be pretty confronting for parents to watch. So listen along with me, but you can see this is what keeps me motivated. And this is why I say congratulations to you as a parent for taking the time to learn these skills because you could potentially save your child's life. This mum, Jody wrote, and she's happy for me to share this with you all. Hi Edwina, I wanted to send my deepest thanks for your online first aid course. A few weeks ago, my 10 month old choked on a teething rusket when she managed to bite a chunk off. Her airway was completely occluded. She was silent and desperate. I just, I get really, um, I get tingles every time I hear stories like this. She's written, it was hands down the most, ex most, the worst experience of my life, but thanks to you, I knew what to do. I picked her up and I put her over my arm and started delivering aggressive back blows in a controlled manner. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do today pausing between each. A lot of drool was coming out and she was limp. I was calling for my partner to call triple O and she had start and had started going through the CPR steps in my head, getting ready. By the fifth back blow, which felt like forever by the way, the rusket chunk fell onto the floor and my daughter let out the biggest wail. It was the best sound of my life. I saved her life because I knew what to do. I cannot thank you enough for making your course available online. I have rewatched the CPR and choking episodes many times. Even now I am crying. I have also watched your free choking episodes on social media. They're excellent reminders, refreshers. Honestly, please never stop what you do. Thank you one million times, Infinity Edwina. I hope you have an amazing day. And every time I, every time I get an email like that, it does just reinforce my why and this is what I do. So thank you for showing up. We are also going to be sharing a discount code with you all. It is sleep well, SWB, sleep well baby. So SWB 50 so that you can get $50 off. It goes to the first hundred sleep well baby families who register. So please take the time to learn these skills. I want everybody, basically I want everybody to have these skills and I don't want any of you to ever have to use them. It's a pretty funny thing, isn't it? I want you to sit down and learn this and I hope you never ever need to use these skills. Finally, there will be a period for Q&A at the end, so if you have any questions around what I'm going to show you, please um, just pop them in here and I'll answer them. That's why we had to limit this masterclass in numbers because I wanna make sure that I get an opportunity to answer a lot of your questions. And don't forget, if you haven't registered, you can still get your freebie guide. I want everybody to have that to put on their fridge. How does that sound? Is everyone still with me? Good. All right, I'm going to go through, I just had a bit of a feel for the ages that we're talking about here. So we're going to run through a scenario of introducing solids. I think that that would be really appropriate for you all. It's also one of the most high risk times that we see of babies and toddlers presenting to the emergency department or their families needing to call for a paramedic or ambulance. Between the ages of zero to four, choking is one of the most common reasons a family will call a paramedic. In saying that, that is us introducing food to them. So either if you're choosing um, introducing puree or baby led weaning or family foods, whatever you choose. And again, in our online course, we have a guide around how to do that safely. And it's really important that you understand how to do that safely, but to also make it enjoyable for yourself and for your family. However, I also noticed that we've got some older children or maybe your baby's just started to crawl or move around the house. And it can just be little things around the household. Like I've got a little Ushi here, sorry to the Woolworths group, but I detest these things. Kids put them in their mouth, chew on them, and they're a perfect way to include an airway. 
Unfortunately, what I've seen and I've nursed families or comforted families after balloons, so deflated balloons are a really easy thing to occlude a child's airway as well. They're colorful, they look fabulous, they easily put them into their mouth marbles, bouncy balls, things like that. And I'm not saying this because I want you to go home and feel paranoid or be like a helicopter parent, but just have an awareness of these things. It's also really hard if you have older children, because I have older children, I understand there's Lego, there's bits all over our house, but just have an awareness, okay? So one little challenge that I give to all of my online course parents is to crawl around your house, open cupboards and drawers, see what is going to be available to your baby or toddler once they start to mobilize. But just for this scenario, we are gonna run through that we're introducing solids, okay? Because I think that that's a very common time that people need to know what to do if a baby or a toddler chokes. Again, the way that I teach in my online course, it's important that you understand a bit of basic anatomy, a bit of basic the way that we're built. I don't want to um, use any big fancy words because again, that's just, you know, that's not the best way for you to learn and to remember. This is not an accredited course that we teach. It's actually just about what do you need to know as a parent to make sure that you respond in a timely way. I'm not gonna teach you how to fix or diagnose any illnesses in your children. It's about making that decision. Do I need to call for a paramedic or an ambulance? Or do I need to go to the emergency department? Or do I just need to go to my GP? So we cover obviously all of the first aid emergencies, but also just the basics. Like what do I do if my baby's got a fever or some diarrhea or a rash? You know, do we need to be going to the emergency department? And that's what's really important as a parent to know how to manage those things. So in this scenario, we're going to do introducing solids. When you're introducing solids, and again, if you are introducing solids, go through our guide in our online course, but some key things are making sure that your baby is able to sit upright unassisted, either in like a bumbo type style chair or a high chair. You don't want to be introducing solids to a baby when you're feeding them like this. Again, it's gonna be more difficult for them. In terms of the basic anatomy, take a deep, deep breath through your nose, everyone. Okay, and take a deep breath through your mouth. And that is because you and your children are air breathers. They were water breathers when they were in utero inside of your tummy and it transitioned to being air breathers. So that tube from the nose and the mouth fills your lungs and fills your baby's lungs. What happens is that it oxygenates and so the oxygen goes into your lungs, it oxygenates your blood, the blood, the oxygenated blood, then pumps from the heart to your brain. It pumps all over your body, but the key part is it's getting to your brain. So what we want to make sure is that air continues to flow into the lungs. If that's compromised, and it's compromised when a baby or a toddler is choking, or anybody is choking for, for that, you know, for them for that fact, if that's compromised, what is happening? is oxygen getting to your baby or toddler's brain is compromised. Now, a lot of what I'm going to show you looks really aggressive in the way that I'm going to deliver this first aid. And people will say things to me like, what if you bruise the baby or you break a rib or you you know, hurt their sternum and things like that? What if you push what they're choking on down into their lungs? All of those things can be treated. What we can't treat and what we can't fix is oxygen not getting to your baby or toddler's brain. That will cause permanent disability. So please, the absolute key here that I want you to take away from today is that you need to act quickly and you need to know what to do quickly because our goal is making sure that oxygen is getting to your baby or toddler's brain straight away so there's not a permanent disability. Absolutely critical. And I know this is a really full on thing to teach. I teach it all the time in our online courses. The reason I take this very seriously is I don't want any of you to experience having to care or have a family member who has a permanent disability like that. It is life changing. So if we're introducing solids, the first thing I want you to understand is the difference between gagging and choking. Who has a baby that's a gagger? Okay, so they, you put food in their mouth or you offer them food or they put food in their mouth and they make that awful sound. They might look distressed. There might be a bit of color change. Their face goes really red and it's a terrible sound, I know. What your baby is doing there is developmentally appropriate and they are learning 
what they can put in their mouth and what they can't put in their mouth and what they need to chew more. Yep, we've got lots of little gaggers. Oh, it's so hard, guys, I know. But the most important thing that you can do, particularly if your baby is a little bit gaggy, is to put a big smile on your face and to look at them and be like, hey, Jimmy, oh, you're so clever. Chew, chew, chew. Oh, that looks like it was a little bit too big. What you don't wanna do as a parent is be like, oh, and be all panicked, picking them up and patting them on the back because your child is learning what their limits are with what they're putting into their mouth. This is part of learning to eat. The chewing and the masticating and the mm, 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 and that was a little bit too big and I'm gonna vomit it back up and then put it back in my mouth. I know it's totally gross, but it's all totally appropriate and part of your child learning how to eat. If you panic every time or if you continue to only do puree because you're scared about them gagging or choking, it actually can delay their speech, it can delay their relationship with food. So it's really important that you just sort of put on that big face of confidence. And what I don't want you to do is go and be tapping them on the back. Do you want to know why? The reason being, if they are trying to bring it up themselves, what they are doing is pushing that little bit of air that is in their lungs up because that tube that has gone from their mouth down to their lungs is either it's likely that it's just partially blocked and it might not have gone that far down. So they're just trying to bring it up themselves. If you then go and help them to bring it up by tapping them on the back like that, the first thing they're going to do is take a deep breath when they can. And if it's still in their mouth, you could then have them pull it right back down into their airway and then you've really got them choking and it's going to be a lot more hard work. So what I want you to do is just encourage them to bring it up themselves. And that is why we say if it's an effective cough or if they're just gagging, not choking, and gagging is they're able to bring it up themselves, then you just encourage them, sit on your hands if you need to, so that you're not intervening until you're needed to intervene. Because it may then be that the child isn't able to clear it and it may go further down the airway or your child might have a full occlusion of the airway. So they've put something in their mouth and in this scenario, you had something there on the feed, uh, on the high chair. Supervision is absolutely key when you're introducing solids. So not just sitting them in front of the television or stepping out of the room. Make sure that you are with them and you are watching them and you are supervising because if they are choking, it is very different to gagging. It can be silent and it can be very quick. Particularly if it's fully occluded the airway, there will be no sound because there's no air traveling up or down. So in this scenario, we're going to say it is, the child is fully occluded the airway, silent. Your child will still be conscious and will be looking at you and can be looking very distressed. You may even see some color change around the lips and the nose that can happen quite quickly. So it is time for you to act quickly. What I encourage you to do is you're going to go over to your child See if they're able to cough. See if there's any color change. As I said, they'll be looking distressed. You're assessing them for the severity. Are they breathing? What, like, what is the clinical situation? Have a look at them. What you need to do is quickly unbuckle them from the high chair or wherever they're sitting and either starting with five black blows or calling emergency services. So in Australia, triple O. Sometimes if you do the five black blows, and that clears it, that's great. Or call triple O straight away, then start your five black back blows. Why I say that it is absolutely critical that you grab your phone and dial triple O, I actually encourage you to do that first because you can put it on loudspeaker and you can continue to talk to them and you're getting the paramedics to you more quickly. So who here has had to dial triple O before? Anyone give me a hands up if you've ever had to call emergency services in Australia or New Zealand. Often, and again, it can be in heightened, stressful times, people get very overwhelmed. So I want to just talk this through to you. If you call triple O, the first thing they will ask is police, fire or ambulance. So in this scenario, yep, lots of people have had to do it. It's an, it's an incredibly frightening experience. In this scenario, you'll be calling for ambulance. You will then stay on the line and the ambulance officer or the cohort officer will continue to coach you on what you need to be doing. And this is really important. 
The only time that you would stop doing what I'm about to teach you is either if your child has cleared the airway or you've cleared the airway for them. Your child becomes unconscious and you need to start CPR if your child becomes unconscious and unresponsive or if the paramedics arrive. So that's the only reason you would stop. So stay on the line to Triple O. They will continue to be able to coach you. They will continue to be asking about what the situation is and how your child looks. So you're going to pick up your child. I'm going to go through this once and then we're going to go through it together. So just watch what I am doing and the positions that I'm using. I'm going to pick up my child. My child is not breathing. I'm starting to see some color change. They remain conscious. And I'm going to dial zero, zero, zero and be on loudspeaker so I can continue to talk to them. The way that I am holding this child, and this dummy is based on a three month old, and again, it's comfortable for me, and I've practiced this a lot of times, and that's why I want you to practice with me. I am using my arm to support the child to be in a neutral position, so we don't want their chin being leant over, and we don't want it hyperextended like that. They're in a nice neutral position, and I'm using the butt of my hand, and I'm going between the shoulder blades and I'm using gravity. So the head is down. That is why I wouldn't be just patting them in the chair because if they dislodge what's in there, they're gonna <gasps> suck it back down. In this position, it is more likely to drop out of their mouth. So head down, supporting their airway and supporting their neck. I wanna make sure that I'm looking after their neck and not hurting that little baby. But what I'm gonna do looks very aggressive and remember, this is life-saving first aid. You may bruise your baby's back or chest. That is okay. Our goal is to be making sure that there's oxygen still getting to the brain. Head down, butt of my hand here in between the shoulder blades. So in between the shoulder blades. And again, oh, look at your children after this today and be thinking about where would I do that? How forcefully would I do that? Practicing your mind so that this ever happens to you You've gone through the scenario mentally. Head down, gravity, supporting the child, and it's five firm back thrusts. Pausing in between to check to see if we've cleared the airway. Before you do this, if you can clearly see what is in their mouth, if it's something long and you can easily grab it out, by all means do. But don't waste time and don't go spending time sticking your fingers in your child's mouth and potentially pushing it further or occluding it further into their airway. So. In between the shoulder blades, one, two, three, I haven't cleared it, four, five. So I haven't been able to clear that. So what I'm going to do is support my baby's neck again, turn them over, and I'm going to use two fingers, four fingers, or again, the butt of my chest, depending on the size and the age of the baby. So two fingers for this. This is based on a three-month-old and I'm going to go between the nipple line and I'm doing five again at that same pace. And here I can easily see if I am clearing it or if it's popping into their mouth. One, two, three, four, five. Now remember your child is conscious here. Continue to reassure them, let them know, mummy's just helping you, mummy's helping you. We're going to get that out. I know you're scared, mummy's helping you. Continue to reassure your child. Guys, I want you to grab that pillow now. I want you to grab that soft toy. And if you can, stand up off the couch or the kitchen table. If you're in the car or anything like that, come back and re-watch this and practice along with me. Head down, butt of the hand, and let's all do this together. Are you ready? One, hard and firm. And we're forcing like a thrust not a hit, because what we're trying to do is push that bit of oxygen that's in their lungs out to clear whatever is blocking their airway. Two, three, four, five. We have not cleared the airway. I can't see anything coming out and I can't see anything in the child's mouth. I'm gonna turn them back over. And we're going to do two fingers, four fingers, or the butt of the hand, whichever the age is appropriate for. I'll show you shortly after this what to do for a larger child if you're not able to lift them like this. Like so for a toddler, what we would be doing. So again, I'm supporting the neck with my arm. Let's go again. Ready? One, two, three, 
four, five. I have not cleared the airway yet, so I would turn over and go five again. You continue to do five and five, either until you clear the airway, your child becomes unconscious or unresponsive, and then you need to lay them down on a flat surface and commence CPR. I'm obviously not gonna teach the full CPR here, that's about an hour, like 45 minutes an hour in our online course, but it is absolutely critical and that's why I want all of you to come and join us for our online course. You can watch and rewatch as many times as you like. You can get your partner and your grandparents or your babysitter to watch along. Super important that you know what to do. But hopefully with these skills, doing five and five, five and five, and continuing with force, you will be able to clear their airway. So let's say with that last hit, like in Jody's scenario, Bob has cleared whatever was in their airway and occluding their airway. We're going to pick them up and particularly for this age, they're going to need a lot of reassurance. They'll probably have a big cry, very, very distressed, provide the reassurance. What you want her to do is continue to look at their color, provide reassurance. Hi darling, mummy's here, mummy's here, you're okay. The ambulance is still going to be on their way to your house. They're likely still going to come and review your child and see whether they need to go to the emergency department to be reviewed or if they're okay now. Um, if your child becomes unresponsive or unconscious, you need to lay them on a flat surface and commence CPR. I wanna quickly just touch on if your child is a bit bigger. Now I see we've got more and more people joining. If you have just joined and you hadn't registered for this masterclass and you would like the free downloadable, whoops, which has fallen onto the ground, please just send me a DM. I'm more than happy. I want every parent to have these skills and to know what to do. You can send me a DM if you had registered with our, with our community at Sleep Well Baby. You know that you will get sent the replay and you'll also get downloadable. And all of you have access to $50 off our online course. It's for the first 100 Sleep Well Baby families. So it's SWB50 at our checkout on our website. I'll pop something up in stories after this as well. But I don't want you to miss out. So please make sure that you do take the time to learn these skills absolutely life-saving and the beauty of the online program is you can refresh as many times as you like what i want to show you is for an older child so this is sort of based on a six to eight year old but again any child that's too heavy or too big to be able to be in your arms like that is likely you're going to put them up and over your knee why i stand with the baby is i find it easier to be able to get that gravity if you're sitting on a couch or sitting at the kitchen table it is difficult so you could stand and put them over your knee like this but they're going to be quite big so it might be sitting at the couch or the kitchen table and putting them right over your knees so again you're using gravity and using the butt of your hand in between the shoulder blades to do the one two three and I can't see anything clearing four and I'm checking each time five but for an older child like this, it's going to be very difficult to do that over their knee to do the chest thrusts. So you can lay them down flat on the floor and it is more like a chest compression and it is a forceful compression. Again, if you damage or hurt their ribs, those are things that can heal. What won't heal is oxygen not getting to your baby or toddler's brain. Does that make sense for everybody? Again, they're slow. It's not like how I teach you how to do the CPR compressions. It is much slower and it's important that you're checking the mouth or that you've cleared the airway. If they lose consciousness, then you move towards doing baby and toddler CPR and it is absolutely critical that you know how to do that because CPR is what ensures oxygen is getting to the baby's brain. Some of the questions that I often get asked is that if we commit CPR and something has occluded their airway, what if we push it into their lungs? Yes, not ideal that they have a foreign body in their lung, but we can remove that. What we can't do is fix oxygen not getting to the brain. All right, anybody, any questions, pop them in here now. I have gone a little bit over time. I always do. I am so sorry. Um, Elise has, Alyssa, sorry, has asked, 
How do you know whether to use two or four fingers? Again, this is why I want you to get a feel for, and this is why I say to do the refresher, watch the online course over and over, because it's just gonna be on the age and the size of your child. Um, what I don't stick to is saying rules for ages, because we all know that we all have very different size babies and toddlers. So just thinking about how you're going to be able to apply enough force. There's not really like a wrong or a right in this space, Alyssa, um, just as long as you feel like you can give enough force for that chest thrust to be able to try and push whatever oxygen, I mean, whatever air is in the lungs out to occlude. Um, position for a six month old, same sort of thing, Heidi. Oh, yeah, there you go, I kind of answered your question there. It depends on the size of your six month old. I know for my daughter Polly, I probably could have easily put her over my arm because she was quite little and you know, not a big baby, whereas my son was a really big baby and I don't have a lot of upper body strength, but I know if my husband was doing it, he'd easily be able to put them over the arm. Um, what if something just gets caught in their mouth and they are struggling to get it out? This happened to our seven month old on the weekend. Um, Bells, you probably didn't see right at the beginning where I talked about the difference between gagging and choking. And if they're struggling and trying to get something out themselves and they remain conscious and they're trying to gag and bring something up themselves, your job is just to put a big smile on your face and encourage them to do that until it's either occluded the airway and there's not an effective cough. And often the way that you'll know that is they'll start to be a little bit of color change around their mouth or their nose. Um, oh, someone just said, has the video stopped or just my end? Gosh, I hope, can everyone give me a wave or a thumbs up? I hope the video hasn't stopped. Um, just so you all know, this will be saved on our IGTV. And for everybody who's registered, we will email a link out to you. So for all the Sleep Well Baby community, SWB, so that you can get $50 off our online course. Great, thank you so much. How quick do you make those back and front blows? At about the pace that I did then. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a lot slower than what we teach for our CPR because you need to be checking and seeing if you're able to clear. Um, is there a rhyme or a song we can use to help? Do you know what, little black dress? I am not actually aware of one. Obviously we've got baby shark and we've got staying alive to remember the CPR compression rate. Um, but again, I'm not aware, so I'll have a little look. If anyone knows one, that's absolutely something we should share. If you've been able to clear by yourself without calling an ambulance, should you still have a baby checked by a GP? Erin, again, it sort of depends how long the baby was choking or gagging for. Ideally, call triple O anyway, because why I say it's important to call triple O before you start, because if you get caught up in doing the actual procedure and then you find you're doing it for 10 minutes and then all of a sudden you're starting CPR and you haven't called a paramedic to come to your house, you've delayed the paramedic getting there for 10 minutes. So again, err on the side of caution, call triple O. I've got lots of friends who are paramedics. They arrive in kitchens with parents crying, children crying, vomit on the floor. That's a good scenario, that makes us happy. Or they get called off before they arrive. And again, that's a good thing. What I don't want, and I share stories in our online first aid class about families who didn't call triple O and have started resuscitation or have started looking after a child, and then the time that it takes for the paramedic to get there once they do call triple O is, it's too long and they lose the child. And there's you know, some really tragic stories that I share in our online course about that to just reinforce and remind you that you are better off calling Triple O and canceling that call or them arriving and it not be necessary as opposed to not having them on the way. Um, what color change are we looking for? It depends on the color of your baby's skin. So if you're fair like I am, or if you've got darker skin, if you're fair like I am, very quickly you start to see color change, particularly around their lips and nose. In darker skin babies, it can be longer and slower to see that. And sometimes we see changes in their nail beds. So again, that depends on the color of your child's skin. Uh, Mary said, my baby goes quite red in the face when gagging. What color change am I looking for with choking? And again, Mary, with gagging, it's color change associated with an effective cough or a non-effective cough. So if she's effectively bringing something up with her gagging and it's not silent and she's not looking, like I know that they do look very distressed, but where it changes is with color change and they're not effectively having any cough and that's where we very quickly know that they're compromised. 
Um, someone said, where can we get the $50 off again? If you just head to our website, birthbeat.com, you'll see our online courses. We do online baby and child first aid courses and online birth courses. They're available 24 seven. You can do them at your own pace and you have my support and you can ask questions at any time. But the code is SWB, standing for sleep well baby, SWB 50. It is only for the first hundred um, sleep well baby families. Um, lots of yep, 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 good. We don't, we didn't have an issue there with video. Um, oh good, it's all good, I restarted. What about if the baby cries so much that they choke? And that can happen, particularly with younger babies. And I guess it's a bit of a myth. People say, oh, breastfed babies can't choke. They actually can. Usually it's just providing reassurance, holding them in a nice neutral position, supporting their neck. Um, and again, if it is that they're crying so much that they're gagging or sort of appear to be choking, there's not actually something occluding their airway. So usually they will settle down quite quickly. The challenge is, particularly when they get a little bit older and they can put things in their mouth, it's hard to know. You can't always see if there is something in their airway or not. So that's again, why you need to have these, um, have these skills. Alison said, when my six month old bites a chuck off, I'm freaked out and use my fingers to get it out. Is this not correct? Um, Alison, again, it's not like there's right or wrong. It's a pretty gray area, but it is about teaching your six month old that they need to learn their limits. You're not going to be there at eight months, 12 months ensuring. And what we see is that children don't develop an understanding of how big a mouthful they can have if we're constantly pulling that food out because it's scaring us. So the best thing for you is to have the skills and know that if something were to happen, you're able to help your baby. But again, you're not helping them in the long run if every time they have a bigger mouthful, we're pulling it out physically for them because your baby's not going to understand and learn their limits of learning how to eat food. And I know that sounds harsh or um, challenging for you, but I say to my parents, sit on your hands um, and just put a big smile on your face even if you're freaking out because your child looks to you for reassurance. Guys, I hope you have found that helpful. Please share this in your mother's groups. Share this everywhere you can. My hope and my wish is that every parent in Australia and New Zealand has these skills and knows what to do. We make it super affordable. You have 12 months access and you can do it at home with your partner, with your grandparents, with your babysitter. But please don't delay in learning this. Don't be the family that I support in the emergency department that comes in and says, we just didn't know what to do. Our courses cover CPR, drowning, choking, burns, bites, stings, spider bites, snake bites, but also things like how to manage gastro, when to be worried about a fever or a rash or a bump to the head or a broken bone. It's super comprehensive. Please do not delay. I want all the Sleep Well Baby family to join us. As I said, it's SWB50. And I can't wait to hear from you all. I hope none of you ever need to use these skills, but please make sure that you know what to do. All right, we'll send out the replay link to everybody, but please make sure that you share this far and wide and reach out to me if you want the free downloadable to go onto your fridge. Thanks everyone, I hope you found this super helpful. Bye.